What is going on everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? It is Ripple Van Winkle coming back to you with another video. Boy, we have so much to go over today. For the past two hours, we have been sitting here, sipping our coffee, doing some research, tying everything that is going on in the world together. We are going to review a one world currency, banking the unbanked, the IMF and central bank digital currencies, and how Ripple and the ILP plays into all of this. Stay tuned, you're not going to want to miss this. It's going to be a bit of a lengthy video, more than usual, but we have a lot of videos that we have dug up that you're going to want to see. But before we do anything, let's look at the price real quick. XRP sitting at 15 cents. It is down 1.37% in the last 24 hours. It is still floating in that range that we have mentioned in our previous videos from the last week. I do believe we're still going to see that sub 10 cent XRP. I believe we're going to be seeing that 8 cent XRP. Nothing has changed. Everything is still exactly where we want it to be. The charts still look like a crash is incoming enough about that price is just a distraction for now do not worry about it let's get right into it up first from stephen bull from the d app give him a follow at d-i-e-p-s-a-n-h he put together this short clip we're going to play for you it's about two minutes and he says the virus is an excuse for the for the elites to replace the legacy economic systems with a new one one world currency is coming. Let's see how this plays out. Have a listen. They want a, a cashless society, a digital cashless society, one world currency, which has phenomenal um, implications for freedom. Um, and the move to a global currency is going to be rapid, very rapid. The uh, banning of the use of, of cash coins you're only going to be allowed to use credit or a debit card you understand we are this going to move very quickly to a new completely new financial system globally run by the new america now again this whole thing all of it is by design the release of this virus where it was released the cratering of crude oil, the stock market crash that we are in right now, I want to talk more about that too, all has been orchestrated perfectly to allow the Federal Reserve to issue their final solution. Something I've been told. The end game here is a completely new monetary system, a completely new economic system, and a one world currency. Wake up! So why are we locking them away and bringing down the world economic system and destroying uh, people's businesses, livelihoods, ability to pay the rent. Tell us. I'll tell you why. Because if they carried on and allowed that to happen, the world economic system would not be demolished. And the idea is to demolish it so you can replace it. Problem, reaction, solution. That's why. You heard both of them. The idea is to demolish the system before you can replace it. What has Chris Lawson told us in past interviews? He has said that since the last financial crash, we still, we still have not found a solution. He is 100% correct. What is going on out there right now? Stocks are getting absolutely destroyed. Wall Street is getting destroyed. Our economy is getting destroyed. Who is going to bail us out this time? The only entity that I know out there that can bail us out, that can help fix what is going on in the world, is the IMF. They have a clean balance sheet. Look it up. It's true. 
So it's very, very interesting what is going on and how the virus is tying into everything and how the economy is crashing. But you need to crash the old system in order to build a new one. It is that simple. All right, up next. From Ganache, give him a follow. We'll link his, his bio in the description of this video. He put out some very, very interesting tweets that put us on a little bit of a deep dive this morning. It's a three-part series. We're going to break it down for you. Breaking. Rothschilds economists say new digital systems should be launched to distribute cash as people are hoarding cash in the crisis. Soon governments will launch their own central bank digital currencies to replace cash. Are you ready? As we pull the image up, he has highlighted for us, governments also need to jerry-rig digital systems so they are able to distribute cash to households directly. If funds can be sent instantly through mobile phones or online bank accounts, people will feel more confident and avoid hoarding cash and slowing the recovery when the virus recedes. How true is that? Part 2. Soon the digital cash will be rolled out through central bank digital currencies and new DLT platforms. Be ready guys. We open up the image and we read over the highlights. The advantages are overwhelming. Cash will be distributed fast. The vulnerable people will be able to get by. Households will be confident enough to spend when conditions improve. And firms will keep their workforce and plants intact, ready to get back to action when a dark episode has passed. Let's keep going. This is where it gets very interesting. Three of three. How to prevent a virus slump and protect the recovery from the economist. And then he tags an article from Coin from Coin Telegraph, the IMF ways to pros and cons of a central bank digital currency. Ganesh outlines, the IMF director says you don't need bank accounts to hold digital cash. Central bank digital currencies may provide public digital means of payments without requiring individuals to hold a bank account. What does that sound like to you? Banking the unbanked. Who is all about banking the unbanked? Ripple with the, with the ILP, the Interledger Protocol, and Coil. So you can make micro payments. Where else does that lead us? Into Mojo Loop. Which we will discuss a little bit later. Back to the IMF. Just from a couple of days ago, March 19th. Deputy Manager, Director, Tao Zhang's keynote address on central bank digital currencies. We will link this article. It is quite a read, as you can see, but we're not going to go over all this. We're going to highlight the five key points about central bank digital currencies and the benefits they can bring. Listen up. First, a more efficient payment system. In some countries, the cost of managing cash can be very high on account of geography and access to the payment systems may not be available to the unbanked. There's that word again, the unbanked, rural or poorer populations. Central bank digital currencies then can decrease cost and enhance efficiency. Second, enhanced financial inclusion. Central bank digital currencies may provide a public digital means of payment without requiring individuals to hold a bank account. Once again, what are they talking about here? The unbanked. Third, more stability and lower barriers to entry for new firms in the payment system. In some countries, such as Sweden and China, we observe an increasing concentration of payment system in the hands of a few very large companies. In this context, some central banks view having their own central their own digital currency as a means to enhance the resilience of the payment system and increase competition in the sector fourth enhanced monetary policy some academic scholars have suggested that by promoting financial inclusion central bank digital currencies can also enhance the transmission of the monetary policy moreover to the extent that cash is is made costly 
central bank digital currencies could be used to charge negative interest rates and thus help alleviate the constraint on the monetary policy and transmission due to the effect of lower bound. And fifth but not, not less, uh, fifth but not least, excuse me, a means of countering new digital currencies. A domestically issued digital currency backed by a trusted government denominated in domestic unit account may help limit the adoption of privately issued currencies. Example, stable coins, which may be difficult to regulate and could pose risk to financial stability and monetary policy transmissions. Despite the potential benefit risk from CBDCs can emerge, measures need to be taken to migrate the risk of getting the design of central bank digital currencies right. So plenty of positives to come from central bank digital currencies. As you can see, the IMF is not a fan of stable coins. Why is that? They are hard to regulate. It's that simple. What did we cover two weeks ago? We talked about central bank digital currencies being built on top of the XRP ledger. Why do we believe this will happen? Couple of reasons. First, the XRP ledger is open source, decentralized, and it has never had any issues. Unlike we've seen on the Bitcoin and Ethereum networks, there is congestion, there is backup. The XRP ledger has never seen that. Why do you think the SEC is currently running a node? We also believe the speed, the transparency, and the transactions per second play a key role into this. Bitcoin and Ethereum cannot handle anywhere by the number of TPSs, transactions per second, that the XRP ledger can handle. And what you probably think is, well, how, well, how does the central bank digital currency built on top of the XRPL benefit us XRP holders? Simple, the central bank digital currencies will be collateralized. What does that mean? Well, it means that say the Bank of England wants a central bank digital currency and they build it on the XRPL, they will buy up a ton of XRP to avoid any slippage and to always have their digital currency remain at that stable price. For example, the Bank of England wants 1 million central bank digital currency coins. They will buy 1.5 million worth of XRP to avoid any slippage so they have that coverage. Don't take my word for it. Go listen to Joel Katz's video on it. I believe Mickey B. Fresh has even talked on this. It is an absolute fact. So let's keep going. This is an article was put out by Ripple just a year ago, May 30th, 2019. Here's that word again, the unbanked. The Ripple Insights article is titled, Banking the Unbanked. Fintech is improving life for billions of people. We want you to listen to this short clip. We're only going to play you about 30 to 40 seconds of this, but listen to what is said here by Catherine Budd, who is the co-founder of the UAE-based Now Money. That new entrants like Ripple and everybody working in digital payments is the potential to convert cash to card and digital payment in this region is unrivaled. If you thought that the market here was saturated, we are only just beginning. Regulated fintech is really where the opportunity lies. Regulated fintech is where the opportunities lies. Who has Ripple been working with for the past four years? The regulators. What other cryptocurrency company can say that? None. Let's keep listening. And I think we're now here. We've got a handful of really fantastic companies that people trust. They're reliable. And they're here in the Middle East. 
I think this is where these kind of businesses are finally going to start being able to be used for companies like yours, for companies like mine. The opportunity is absolutely enormous for well-regulated fintech. Everybody here has the option to end financial exclusion. Now money is one company working towards this, but the market is absolutely enormous. You heard what Catherine said. Regulated companies and banking the unbanked. Let's go over to Now Money. Who are they? Welcome to Now Money. We give accounts to people's we give accounts to people's banks don't. Said over to about us. Take a look at this. Our mission is simple. Give give accounts to people's banks don't. The second part of our mission, make it easier, quicker, and cheaper for these people to send money home. We have adopted the latest financial and regulatory technologies to create a solution which not only provides accounts to those previously excluded, but is also free from fraud and makes money transfer cost effective, quick, and simple. Hashtag empowering the unbanked. This all plays into what Ripple is trying to do. Up next, we're going to discuss Mojo Loop. First, let's go over to Miller Abel's page. Deputy Director, Principal Technologist at the Gates Foundation. October 17th, 2018, he tweets and then is pinned to his page. We are partnering with Ripple and Coil to implement the Interledger protocol and explore ways Mojo Loop can support pro poor payment systems banking the unbanked coil makes it possible for micro payments you can send less than a penny to someone instantly with coil this has never ever been done before there are always limits on how much money you can send because it is so goddamn expensive to send money Let's listen to the short clip from Mojo Loop on what they are trying to do. Imagine your life without banking. How would you pay your bills or store your money for safekeeping? For 2 billion people around the world, these challenges are very real. They buy food, share money with friends and family, and make dozens of other transactions every day. But they do it all in cash. As a result, they miss out on the security and other benefits of bank accounts and payment cards, while financial providers miss out on millions of daily transactions. When cash becomes digital, this all changes. People can spend and save money more easily and securely, and financial providers can access billions of new customers. Digital financial services are starting to spread around the world, but not nearly as fast as they could. One big reason is that providers have to build everything on their own. That means they have to charge high transaction fees that are hard for poor customers to afford, or they don't build anything for new markets at all. It also means that most services end up being a closed loop, where customers can only transact with other customers using the same service. Grace, for example, can use her mobile money account to pay her energy bill and buy groceries, but to receive her paycheck, pay her daughter's school fees, and send money to her parents back home, she still has to use cash. Because her employer uses one bank, the school uses another one, and her parents use a mobile money service that is different from the one Grace uses. If companies had a common platform to work from, they wouldn't have to worry about high costs and closed loops. Moja Loop is a way to build that common platform. Mojo Loop is open source code for making digital payments secure and interoperable across an entire country or region. Named after the Swahili word for one, it can help loop digital financial providers and customers together in one inclusive system. So, when Grace receives her paycheck and sends money to her parents and her daughter's school, she can do it all digitally with a single account. Because behind the scenes, technology powered by Moja Loop is tying everyone's different services together. There are three main components to the code. An interoperability layer, which facilitates payments between different kinds of services, including bank accounts, mobile money wallets, and merchant accounts. A directory service layer, which routes each payment to the correct provider in the ecosystem, 
and a transaction settlement layer, which makes sure that all the money that changes hands between customers throughout the day is recorded in each provider's master ledger as well. Developers can use parts of the software to build or adapt financial products and services, or they can take the whole thing and build an internet of payments, routing transactions from anyone to anyone, instantly and securely. Build an internet of payments from anyone to anyone. Mojaloop is open source so that anyone can use it and make it better. It's software for banks, fintech firms, systems architects, mobile operators, and tech companies. In a world where financial services have always left some people out of the loop, Mojaloop is a tool to bring us all together because an economy that includes everyone benefits everyone. There you have it. An economy that includes everyone benefits everyone. That is dead on the internet of value, the ILP, coil, everything Ripple is doing, Mojo Loop is gonna tie everyone together. There is no reason that we should still have payment systems that are sitting on their own island that are not interoperable and people cannot move money or it's too expensive for them to move money because we are jumping through so many different banks. What Ripple is doing and who they are working with, for example, the IMF, a new financial system is in the works and it is being created right before our eyes. You need to wake up, open your eyes, and you need to see what is actually going on out there. All right, everyone, that's going to do for this video. I got things to do. Hopefully you stuck in there to the end. One of the longest videos we've ever made. But Ripple Van Winkle is out. Have a great day.